Live from Maine and Gervais, this is Good Morning Columbia. Columbia. Thanks so much for waking up with us. I'm Christy Vaughn. And I'm Rochelle Dean. We are live from Maine and Gervais. Your time right now, 531. Yeah, and on this Wednesday morning, here's the deal. You don't even <laughs> have to look outside. You don't have to peek your head outside. It's just Nothing. going to be hot. It's going to be another hot one. <laughs> yes, That's right. And you are probably going to have to prepare for it by either staying in the air conditioning or if you go outside, not being in the sun too long. Mm -hmm. Because that's Grab what we've been water. doing for the last few days. For more on what we can expect, let's turn things over to meteorologist Jonathan Kennedy, who has been monitoring the temperatures as they continue to soar. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Uh, this will be the coolest time of the day, but it's not all that cool no, just yet. Really. Uh, <laughs> many areas uh, still reporting 80 degree temperatures, wow. and it's 530 in the morning. Yeah. So it is going to be another hot one outside. And as we check in, uh, the current conditions here downtown Columbia, 79 degrees, mostly clear skies. Winds are calm, so we're seeing a good setup for cooling temperatures. But again, we are cooling down from the 103 from yesterday. So uh, it took us a long time to even get to 79 after seeing 103. Most of us in the upper 70s dew points are in the 70s still. So it is going to be very humid out there for your Wednesday forecast. 79 downtown, 79 in Sumter, Florence at 79 as well. So uh, they were in the 80s the last time we checked in, so they have cooled down about a, another two degrees or so to officially get them out of the 80s, but uh, still very, very warm either way. Did see a weak front move through, brought us a few showers yesterday. That's going to be to our south, so look for a dry forecast today, mostly clear skies. We saw a high of, of uh, 103 yesterday, and I think we're going to see a very hot day today, likely around 100 as we head throughout your afternoon hours today. Now, a few showers are still possible, but I think for the most part, we're going to be seeing a drier trend. Of course, we've been pretty dry of late, not only this week, but over the last uh, couple months or so. We have seen some good rain here and there, but for the most part, uh, the rain has been kind of skipping around us, and I think that similar story plays out for your Wednesday. As high pressure kind of slides in for us, we'll kind of see a little more dry weather before some more rain comes our way for Thursday's forecast. But for now, I don't see any rain for your morning commute. I think it'll be nice and dry this afternoon as well, which is uh, certainly nice if you have some outdoor activities. Now, you might want to limit those because it's going to be very, very hot. So we'll see highs near 100 later today, 93 by lunchtime. So uh, there's certainly not really any time of the day except for maybe in the next hour or two where you're going to find temperatures that just aren't off the charts. So if you got to be outside, you got to mow the yard, do something like that, uh, get it done as early as possible because... Yeah. Even if you wait till later on tonight, it's not going to be cool tonight. It's yeah. going to be 95 when it's, you know, 9 o'clock at night. So yeah, exactly. it's still going to be very, very hot. So if yeah. you're going to have anything to get done outside, get it done now. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the sun's not up. So <laughs> <laughs> it's going to make it, yeah, make it a little harder for you. Maybe do yard see. work. Yeah, which is why it's going to be cool because the sun's not <laughs> yeah. up. But uh, we do see that sunrise right around 630. And it's going to be up, up, and away from there. Mm, yeah, all well, right. We will definitely keep our eyes to the sky and yeah. hear what you have to say about temperatures as we get closer to that noon hour. Yeah. Thanks, John. Thank yeah. you. Well, right now we want to give you a traffic update as you get ready to hit the roads this morning. That's right. Here are some of the trouble spots you might encounter as you're heading out and about for your morning commute. The South Carolina Highway Patrol is responding to two collisions, both of them without injury. They're located on I-77. Now that's in the southbound lanes near mile marker 9 and 26. Highway Patrol also assisting a motorist on I-20. That's going to be in the westbound lane near mile marker 70. Of course, we'll continue to watch the roads and keep you updated for your morning commute. That's right. And as always, ABC Columbia wants to help you jumpstart your day. We've got a quick rundown of your top morning headlines. We're going to get started with Vote 2016. And it is not just the temperatures that are heating up. So is the race to the White House. Donald Trump, the current leader in the Republican presidential polls, kicked off his South Carolina campaign yesterday in Bluffton. And this morning, Trump finds himself in a whirlwind of backlash from his own political party. During a stop in South Carolina here, Trump, true to form, fired back at South Carolina's own U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham. They can talk all they want. I mean, I got a little dose of it. Uh, I was coming up. And I see your senator. What a stiff. What a stiff. Lindsey Graham. <laughs> by the way, by the way, he's registered zero in the poll. Zero. He's on television all the time. Well, Trump's war of words didn't stop there. No. 
<laughs> he went so far as to give out what he claims is Senator Lindsey Graham's personal phone number to that crowd and to national television. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> of course, the moment was not lost on Senator Graham. He tweeted out shortly after Trump's comments, quote, probably getting a new phone, iPhone or Android. So any recommendations, right? <laughs> He's looking for them. He's looking for them. And I wonder whether or not it was really his phone number or if Senator Graham was just playing along with it, yeah. which we was a good sport about it, good you sport. know? If it was my phone number, I wouldn't be so happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with Trump, Honestly, you never, you know. never know. I saw some of the reports that, uh, you know, some of the uh, national news that networks like ABC News mm -hmm. and tried to call the phone number to see. Oh, yeah, see and there was, they were saying that voicemails did, well. did give it some validity. Well, right. <laughs> well, not Trump, not Graham, but GOP presidential hopeful Jeff Bush continues his campaign in South Carolina today. He's going to be in Spartanburg visiting the Carolina Pregnancy Center, followed by a town hall meeting in Aiken. That's right. And yesterday, Bush joined joined some of his running mates in speaking out against Trump's role in his political party. The two-time Florida governor says Donald Trump, quote, should not even be alongside the other candidates. He says Republicans do not stand a chance of winning if they follow Trump's lead. If we embrace this language of divisiveness and ugliness, we'll never win. We'll never win. Well, Bush went on to say that he understands why Trump is able to tap into the anger felt by voters about issues like immigration, but that his language is damaging the party. And South Carolina is seeing a lot of red. Yes, another Republican presidential hopeful was campaigning in South Carolina yesterday. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie spoke with voters at a seafood restaurant in Myrtle Beach. And tomorrow, we're turning things blue. Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton will be speaking with mayors and local officials tomorrow morning at Brooklyn Baptist Church in West Columbia. After that, Clinton will be headed to Greenville to continue her campaign. And the list of presidential candidates crisscrossing the state doesn't end there. No, it doesn't. Republican Senator Rand Paul will be headed to the South Carolina coast early next week. He'll be at Mount Pleasant on Monday at the Veterans and Military Town Hall Forum. And next month, expect another Republican presidential candidate to run right through the state. Former Texas Governor Rick Perry has announced he will be speaking at the pro-family rally in South Carolina. That's going to be at the end of August. South Carolina, of course, proving to be a political hot spot. The South Carolina primary takes place February 20th. And, of course, that is the first in the South primary. So we tend to be a proving ground, a testing ground for the race to the White House. That's right, and everyone wants to get their hands in and make their appearance known so that they can grab as many voters yes. as possible here in South Carolina and see exactly where they could possibly stand across the country. So, yeah, that's a good heads up, but we will definitely see a lot of action here. Oh, yeah, and we've mm -hmm. got a long list of Republican GOP oh, yeah, presidential hopefuls. Through. Yeah, right. well, still to come, it's shaping up to be another scorcher. That's right, but officials have a warning when it comes to keeping cool and keeping your kids safe in this extreme heat. And we're well on our way to more extreme heat right now, 77 degrees under mostly clear skies. It's going to be sunny and hot with a high near 100 this afternoon. More details next. We're live from Maine and Gervais. <music> 544 on your Wednesday, mostly clear. We're seeing upper 70s right now, and we'll see mostly sunny skies later today. And that's certainly going to bring us another hot forecast. We saw the hottest day of 2015 yesterday with a high of 103. Heat index made it feel closer to 110. And we'll probably be in the triple digits today for the fourth day in a row. I see more heat and humidity as well. And I could see a few showers and thunderstorms, but I think a lot of that stays to our south is that that little weak front that went through is going to allow us to see a much drier forecast today. So it's going to be dry. It's going to be hot, uh, but at least dry in the form of rainfall. We're still going to see a lot of humidity out there, Christine. Yeah, and another hot day ahead. So, of course, officials are warning residents to take some precautions when it comes to keeping cool. And keeping your kids safe. Of course, it's a parent's worst nightmare, leaving your child in a hot car on a day like today. And it happens more often than you may think. Yeah, officials say last year there were 30 heat-related fatalities. They were all related to car incidents. And in the unfortunate event that a loved one, or one of your loved ones should become locked in the car, officials say it's critical to assess the situation and act fast. If it's a situation where somebody could possibly uh, be overheating or suffering from heat exhaustion or heat stroke, uh, by all means, you know, if you have to force your way into a vehicle, do that because you can replace a window, but you cannot replace a life. 
And officials also say to call 911 for help to get the child medical attention as quickly as possible. And of course, these types of situations are preventable. Officials are offering a helpful tip. Make sure when you enter the vehicle that you leave something you know you must need, such as a purse or something like that, mm -hmm. in the back seat with that child or even your pet, like a cell phone, a house key, something like that, that you, you know you'll need it when you get out of the vehicle. Right. It just helps serve as a reminder that, you know, in the days when we're all busy and the mornings where we're in a rush, it serves as a reminder check mm -hmm. check the back seat. Yeah. Make sure that everybody's yeah, safe. Unfortunately, it doesn't take long when it's this hot. Oh gosh, no. I, it gets so hot in those cars. You Quickly. Sat, yeah, if, you, if you've ever been, you know, any of us like sat in the grocery store, or sat in the car when your mom goes to the grocery mm -hmm. store or something like that mm -hmm. when you're little, you know yeah. how hot it gets, hot it gets. so quick. Yeah. It's just, uh. mm. Dangerous out there. Well, mm -hmm. still to come, it's still all about the kids, how our little ones are faring across the state. That's next. Stay with us. We are live from Maine and Gervais. Do you want the ultimate airport parking experience? Welcome back to Good Morning Columbia. We're coming up on 5.50 this morning. A national report finds the overall well-being of South Carolina's kids is improving despite poverty growing. The latest Kids Count survey released showing the state ranking 42nd overall in a child's chance of succeeding. That's up from 45th last year. It's the highest ranking South Carolina has earned in the 25-year existence of the report. One in four kids in our state lives in poverty. Well, those aren't the only numbers we're looking at. The Department of Employment and Workforce announced the unemployment rate fell to 6.6% in June. That's down two-tenths of a percent from May. An official say that number is expected to improve with more than 2,000 people finding jobs by the end of June. And the Greater Irmo Chamber of Commerce is moving on up. The residents and business owners got an in close and personal look at the facilities. The new chamber is located right next to the Irmo Town Hall and even more changes are on the way with the chamber hiring a new president. Well, she's blurred the lines and the VMAs and before now, a pop star has gone from performing to hosting. Christy Vaughn joins us to tell us more. Hey, Christy. Hey, Rochelle. Miley Cyrus will be hosting the MTV Video Music Awards this year. So will she come in like a wrecking ball? Well, only time will tell. Mary Maloney has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. MTV must have loved... All right, well, still to come, it's hot outside. Boy, is it. But we're cooling off in the Arctic for your day in history. That's next. Stay with us. We are live from Maine and Gervais.